live in the studio here at Viewpoint, a program of politicians, personalities, and perspectives. And uh, we have someone on the line now who wishes to weigh in on the closing of the Logan Correctional Center. Uh, go right ahead, sir. Oh, oh. he's he's well, he got they, they got tired of waiting. And, he got uh, tired. Well, we were we had. I'm sorry. We have to run commercials. If you like, sir, uh, ring that phone again, and uh, we'll accommodate you this time. Sorry to keep you waiting, um, Andy. I, I'm trying to think of what could happen in this community that would be any worse economically than the uh, than the closing of this facility, and, and I can't come up with a. With well, we have a uh, we have several large employers in our community that would I think be equally or more so. And, you know, if we lost Eaton, that would really hurt. Not oh. just losing all of those jobs because they employ more individuals mm -hmm. in our community, but they're so generous to our community. Uh, That's a spin-off on that. They are extremely community-minded out yeah. there. So Eaton would, uh, really any job loss out of our community hurts, but to this magnitude, it would really devastate our community. It really would. Well, yes, and it's going to devastate these other communities too, but it is a conundrum because it, there has to be some way to get at this. Uh, and of course, as I just said, I advocate cleaning their own house first but aside from that they're <laughs> going to have to do some cutting uh, I just don't I don't know what the answer is but this isn't only going to hurt Lincoln this is going to hurt the people from Broadwell who come here to work the people from Elkhart who come here to work people from Hartsburg and Emden the people from Decatur who Absolutely. come here to work we have a lot of commuters it's going to spread here. quite a bit also you know mm -hmm. they're JDC uh, Jacksonville Developmental Center yes. is on one of, is on that list of the seven, and we have a number of former Lincoln Developmental employees Lincoln. that live in Logan County that drive to Jacksonville to work. So we would be hit again, mm -hmm. um, not just Lo uh, Lincoln Developmental mm -hmm. Center, but Logan Correctional, and then JDC closing. This is just a poor decision. It, it would be a poor decision not only for Logan County, but for our entire state for many reasons. Um, public safety, I think, would be another one. They saw in California where they, the prisons were overcrowded and there was a, um, I believe it was federal, came down and said, you've got to let them go. Your, your yep, prisons right. are overcrowded. You've got to let some of them go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our our governor several years ago tried that early release program and it didn't work out so well but if you know we could be forced if this move is made and these facilities are closed our hand could be forced to go to the early release program and then what well you point would like to apologize to the caller who, who called in just before the commercial break we had to go uh, fulfill those uh, contractual obligations and invite uh, the caller or callers to call back again you know Andy and Judith and Jim uh, None of us know the, the workings of the, the Department of Corrections, and that's just as well. But we see every day, or every week, I should say, these buses that fly up and down 55, uh, transporting prisoners uh, back and forth. Uh, there must be some validity for that, but it's, it's just on the surface, on the surface, I emphasize, it just seems like we could save tons of money by not running those folks all over uh, up and down the state. If somebody uh, has an answer for that that is uh, uh, familiar with the Department of Corrections procedures, uh, we'd appreciate uh, being uh, uh, filled in on that. So we'd be... Uh, uh, well, these people have to go to the, the county of origin for hearings. Yes. Of origin of their... Well, that's a, little, that's a little bus. I'm talking about the that's big bands. That's, that's the little buses. The I don't know. Yeah. I and they have know. to have classifying and, and, and all of that. Uh, uh, there are certain things they have to do. I understand that, obviously. But it just seemed like week in and week out, you see, uh, you can hardly go on 55 without seeing these buses running up and down the highway. That's expensive. You can start right there. That's gallons to the mile. But again, so speaking of expensive, here's a side note. Um, they just completed, or about, well, actually, it's not done yet, an $800,000 roofing project out at Logan Correctional. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about closing it. To me, that doesn't make good business sense. Yeah. Um, another interesting side note is um, the average cost per inmate it, per year is um, $22,000. In the state of Illinois, Logan Correctional is only seventeen thousand. Um, so, 
my business mind says, well, wouldn't you want to keep the prison open that is saving you the money? Just by our doing what we do here in Logan County, we're saving the state money because we're operating our prison at a lesser cost. But it's still on the chopping block. Now, when these people come, are they going to uh, make any presentation at all? I'm talking about this commission that's coming uh, out to Lincoln Christian University. Are they going to make any presentation? Are they going to say uh, who they are and why they're here? And uh, I, um, I'm not certain. Uh, this will be my first go around with a COGFA hearing. Mm -hmm. I do know that the Department of Corrections will be the first to be to testify and be questioned by the COGFA here um, legislators. Uh, so they're up first, and then our uh, next up would be our local legislators like Senator Brady and Bomke and Brower, and I'm assuming Mitchell and Poe will probably step in as well. Oh, oh you know what? Poe won't because he's on the COGFA hearing commission. He's uh, he will be setting up there. Now this scenario will take place where? At the chapel. Okay, these yeah. people then are going to make presentations before the people get up and give their two-minute talk? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that, that's the lineup that I know so far. And then what we're trying to do is get our list together today and submit it so we can... Because at the last, I can't remember which uh, community it was, they had a group that was opposed to the prison, and they got right after their local legislators that group got up and spoke and they got a lot of time and we don't want that to happen and um, believe it or not there are some individuals out there in the community that do not feel like logan correctional should be in, in logan county there's this um oh but the name works so well here. I, it does <laughs> uh, um there's some misinformation that if the prison leaves and please do not think I'm just the messenger of this because I've had people talk to me about this. They believe if the prison goes, so will the riffraff. And um, I, it's just, there's riffraff. I didn't ask them to find their term of riffraff, but um, I can only imagine. There's riffraff everywhere. It's homegrown. It's imported. It's exported. Um, exactly and correct. so maybe we get a little well rid said. of a little riffraff, but we then have a community that are already below the median national and state median income that will now be um, dependent on ser government services largely that are uh, not there. They're being taken away. The funding's going away. Our regional office of education is suffering. Um, Poor Jean Anderson has not been paid since June, and she is, you know... Which is absolutely asinine. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to say the idiocy of all of this, I think it can't get worse, and then the next thing happens, and they do <laughs> something like the Regional Office of Education. I'm just blown away. And uh, that office doesn't serve just Logan County, but they've got at least six counties that they serve, and that's a vital part of our community. I mean, every step of the way. Just to go back, just a little information. So they're cutting the Regional Office of Education funding, who um, is our number one, our only agency in Logan County fighting truancy. Mm -hmm. And we, ha we know that 75% of our prisoners don't have high school diplomas. So now we're creating potentially more people in our prison systems but yet we're cutting the funding for that as well i mean just none of it makes sense none of it makes yeah, which sense. which brings up an important part miss haig uh, i know in our volunteering out there at logan uh where we uh work with the storybook program uh, we're in classrooms and they seem to be pretty well run and i've been impressed by that as i just look at notes on blackboards and so forth now it's just axiomatic that if you take these prisoners out and, and stuff them in shoeboxes everywhere around the state, that educational system within the State Department of Corrections is going to break down by sheer numbers. Now, uh, I don't think that's a point that's ever been considered by anybody at all. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not going to be possible for them to, to run an effective educational program 
in any prison where it's so crowded that that you have a a, a danger factor, mm -hmm. and that's going to be present every uh, that factor will be present in every prison in the state of Illinois. Right, and and that uh, those educational programs in the prison are very important <clears throat> in rehabilitation and and you know we talk about Logan and being um they they don't really call it a medium or minimum security prisons anymore. They've got different I don't I and I'm not an expert on it, but we you know you go out there and visit and you talk about how many of those inmates get their high school diploma and their um, GEDs. their GEDs, GEDs and they go on and get a college education mm -hmm. while they're incarcerated so they have a viable way to support themselves uh, you know whether they choose to do that um, or not I would venture to guess and I don't have any statistics on this that it's probably the first time in their lives that they've been given an alternative I mean, we all have choices, absolutely. We all, and most of us make the right choices. But those educational programs in, this, in the prisons are really important. Um, Vitally, because it's hard enough for those people to get any employment coming out of a prison. Absolutely. That they really have a big strike against them. And then, if you're going at it without any education besides, I just don't think that you've got much hope. You know, Judith, you mentioned employment. I'm sitting here thinking, with no direct knowledge whatsoever, but I just know in communities like this, you have lots of small businesses who today, as we speak, are finding it tough to make it. And they employ one, two, three, four, ten, fifteen people. Uh, a blow like this could not only put the prison employees out of circulation insofar as Lincoln Gogan is concerned, but it inevitably, just surely as I said here, will put some business employees out on the street looking for jobs too. Oh, absolutely. That's just axiomatic. Absolutely. And there are, I mean, we have <clears throat> some really smart people in our community, but there are a number of businesses that get it. They really get it. We had um, Jim Examus, Chris Grau, and Coy Hutchcraft all went in together and bought us full paid ad ads for. Uh, a newspaper in the community and they to help us get people at the march because they understand what it would do to their mm, business you bet. Charlie Lee donated all the hot dogs all the buns and ketchup and the grill and really took care of us for the march because he understands the impact this could have on his business plus Charlie Lee just does nice things. he's just a really nice guy <laughs> yes He's a great guy. Um, but our, our businesses get it. They understand it. There are uh, several people, uh, business people, who have walked up and handed me $100 cash and said, don't put my name on it. But, you know, we have a – they didn't give it to me personally. That would be really nice. But um, <laughs> they we have a fund. It's called the Save Logan Fund. Mm -hmm. And it is in partnership with the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Partnership. Mm -hmm. And um, we have gotten donations from AFSME quite a bit. Actually, they have, I, we're very blessed to have them working with us in this collaborative. Last night, they approved an additional $5,000 to be spent for 500 yard signs. And we're going to do some radio ads right here with WLCN to bring awareness about the, the hearing next week. Um, it helps us buy the t-shirts that we're selling. I wish we could give the t-shirts away, but we don't have that kind of money to be able to do that. But that fund has really been helpful because the chamber, we don't have that kind of extra cash laying around when things like this come up. So well, um, okay. people have been very generous. Well, if you don't think you have extra cash line, they get through with Logan. Mm -hmm. That If that comes to pass, pray not. We, you, know, you really have no cash. And I just want to bring this point home because I think there are still a number of people. I don't know anybody that works at the prison. I don't work there. I have a job out of town maybe or my job's safe. Um, this will not affect me. I had a, a home here in or in Lincoln and it took me almost a year to sell it. And there was the entire time I lived in that house, which was nearly four years, um, there was a vacant house next to me. It would get renters in it, and then they'd leave. Right when we first moved in, the homeowners moved to Florida or somewhere. I don't remember where. But I found out later that they used to, both of them used to work at LDC, and their home was foreclosed on eventually. And that affected my house. You're right. I could not, I mean, people were not happy that there was this vacant, overgrown um, house next to us. Right. And, and that, 
and we have that all around Logan County because of LDC and that's going to be even more prevalent if Logan Correctional closes. You know it may be because Judith and I are familiar by virtue of volunteering with the administrations here uh, of course we're not talking about Lincoln the, the ladies uh, prison but uh, Logan um, from our standpoint it certainly seems to be very well organized and very well run they've got a great staff out there um, and their hands are full now just with the with the incumbent population uh, what's it going to be like for wardens and, and, and staff members uh, on these uh, prisons uh, all over the state where they start uh, with a great influx of, of, of crowding in the new prisons. Their, their job is going to be nigh on to impossible. Right, and they're nervous about it. They are, and they, and rightfully you know, so. last night we had another meeting and, and that was one of the top conversations. Mm -hmm. There's always side conversations aside from the agenda and they, they talk about it. They're aware of it. And the reason they're aware of it is because in their training to do their job, what, one of the number one things they talk about is overcrowding and safety and how to combat that. And, and, and I don't know all the details of it. I've just kind of heard uh, the employees out there talking mm -hmm. about what they've been trained on and what they're not supposed to have. And, and this goes against everything that their own rules and regulations require. Let's reiterate all the facts for the the uh, gathering that's going to be at Lincoln Christian University so that people can put that on their calendar. It is, again, it's at Lincoln Christian University at the Hargrove, Hargrove Chapel. And I believe the address some people have at, it's 100 Campus View Drive um, for Lincoln Christian University, if you want to throw that in your GPS. and. Um, it's down, we would like people to pull in the main road or the main driveway where the two pillars that say Lincoln mm -hmm. Christian University are. And we're going to have people lined up there and we want everybody to come join us. We want everybody to wear their red. If you don't have red or you would like to contribute to the Save Logan Fund, you can buy a t-shirt for $10 and just call the chamber office at 735-2385. And we want everybody there about 4.45. The hearing actually ta starts at 5 o'clock, and we'll all go into um, the chapel, and we'll be there for quite a while, I imagine, because there are a lot of people that have some stuff to say. No doubt, no doubt. So mark that on your calendars and be sure and attend. It's, uh, it's not just them that's going to be affected. It's us. It's us. Yes, whether you're an employer or an employee, uh, well, that's of paramount importance, obviously. Uh, this would this rally uh, should get the attention of those of us who uh, are uh, retired, uh, other folks who are in the community that uh, uh, think, and I emphasize that, think they don't have a direct relationship to the community, and in fact, they, we all do. So uh, I'd like to urge uh, everybody out there to uh, be sure and. Uh, uh, show up out there at five o'clock. Uh, uh, that would be uh, next Thursday. No, and that's next Wednesday. Wednesday, next, next Wednesday, Wednesday, October twenty sixth. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want want to say this yes, one thing, please. and I'm yes. sure I didn't make it up because I'm not really that smart. But oh. I <laughs> I sent out an email this week calling on our chamber members to give us their stories and to do and to be yes. there. To show well written. I saw that. Thank you, and mm -hmm. show their support. And the last line said, and I truly mean believe this there are a few times in our lives that we are called upon to do something that really really matters and if you think for one minute standing in that crowd not saying anything doesn't matter you're sadly mistaken because this and getting involved in this moment truly matters to logan county we appreciate very much your presence here um we always like to close viewpoint with a uh, comment or two uh, by some luminary uh, in my mind, this is one of the lesser luminaries, but uh, former President Johnson said, uh, and he's right about this, certainly. And I was, wish the governor could hear this last part. Doing what is right isn't the problem. It's knowing what is right. Governor Quinn, would you pay attention to that, please? Thank you for viewpoint. The day has come.
The new Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital is now open, and we are mission ready. Hello, this is Dolan Dalpaz, President and Chief Executive.